Hey folks, it's Jordi here for Cinecom.net. Recently, some computer security group issued a security problem with QuickTime on Windows. Apple does not want to update their software anymore, which opens the door for attackers. So everyone is basically telling us to immediately uninstall QuickTime from our Windows machine. However, QuickTime is not only a video player, but also holds many of our codecs that we use for editing our videos. One of which is the very popular H264 codec, which is used by almost everything. But Adobe made sure that many of these codecs were implemented in their software without the need of QuickTime. After uninstalling QuickTime, I got a message from Adobe that not everything would work because I didn't have QuickTime installed. The first thing I tested was a project where I was editing H264 clips in Premiere Pro that came from my GH4. And it worked perfectly. I didn't notice any difference, so Adobe was right. When I tried to export a project, I was also still able to choose the H264 codec, but only in the MP4 wrapper. When choosing QuickTime to get an MOV file, I got an expected error message. But QuickTime also came with some codecs that Adobe didn't support by default. One of which is a QuickTime animation, and the other one is the industry standard Apple ProRes. And this is a major problem. I, for instance, use Apple Animation to export videos with a transparent layer. You can see it as a transparent PNG image, but then for video. An article by Trend Microsecurity tells us that the issue lays in the QuickTime player. So I did some searches to find a way to keep the codecs and only delete the player. And I came up with a solution. First, you do in fact want to install QuickTime from your Windows machine. Next, you download a program called QuickTime Lite. This is a stripped-down version of QuickTime that only gives you the essentials, the codecs and such. You can find a link to it, by the way, by clicking in the cards up there. When installing QuickTime Lite, you can deselect the browser plugins as you won't need them to use the codecs in your favorite video editor. Now, I'm not a specialist myself on all this codec and software thing, so if any of you have any additional information or some advice on what to do here, then please leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.